according to Afrobarometer survey, public confidence in the police, court, and EC have seen drastic drop, or we can say dramatic drops. And today we'll be assessing the numbers to have this conversation. And for you, the listener, my question to you is simple. How well do you trust these agencies ahead of election 2024 and beyond? Because 2012 and 2020 has proven that even beyond the elections, they may be dispute. And we have to go through a certain process. So how do you trust these state institutions ahead of the elections and beyond? And the institutions today we are profiling are three, the courts, the police, and the electoral commission. Now, my data analyst is in the studio already, my ringman. <laughs> you heard him singing the Yenara Assassin. <laughs> Leo is in the studio. So we'll be using Afrobarometer data. Yeah. We cannot use our opinions to judge this. We'll be using data. When you come to Facebook, LUV99.5 Extra. The Extra is XTRA on Facebook. All the data is there. No conjectures. It's just the data that we'll be, that we'll be profiling. Now, uh, I want to start with the institutions. Then we will later come to what the Afrobarometer call perception when it comes to fresh and fairness of most recent elections. Then lastly, we will also look at fear of intimidation. How mm -hmm. people feel that, oh, men got to Are people afraid to go and cast their votes? We will also look at fear and intimidation. Then later we look at the trends. Or we can even start with that. The trends when it comes to the three state institutions, EC and all that. For those who don't know Afrobarometer, so Afrobarometer, basically, if I'm giving you a, a view of it, they do political and social, you know, analysis when it comes to countries. They operate in about 30 countries. They've expanded. When it comes to Ghana, they've done about nine such of reports. They did mm -hmm. it in 1999. So they are not a new or yeah. a baby. So yeah. meaning they have 25 years experience in doing this. 1999 was the first one. They did 2002. They did 2005. They 2008. did uh, 2008, 2012, 2014. 2017, 2019, and 2020. 2022. So that's about nine rounds of elections. And the surveys are conducted in Akan, in English, in Eve, in Ga, in Dagbani, and Dagari. So they do the survey in also in about six different languages. So not just English. They do it in about six Akan, English, Eve, Ga, Dagbani, and Dagari. And when it comes to Ghana, just like the Transverse International, in the Ghana Integrity Initiative, managing the perception, corruption, perception in this and all that. When it comes to this survey, also CDD Ghana, Ghana Center for Democratic Development, they manages the survey when it comes to this. So the likes of Professor H. Kosi Prempe, the, the legendary Professor Jima Bwedi, uh, Professor Janosai Kapon, and all that. These are the guys managing it. And these guys, their profile far, you know, go beyond the borders of Ghana and how well reputable they are. Now, you give us the picture one. Uh, Joel, uh, let, let Joel okay. project it on the big screen, then we can look at it. So, this is an assessment of all the nine rounds of survey that yeah, we've done. The overall trust. Overall, hey, Dave, uh, Louis, more than nine. Let me count it all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it's, yeah, nine. it's nine. Nine. So, so, it says the overall trust in institutions. Uh, so, this is uh, what who say they trust the institutions somewhat or a lot. So that's what they put together. So do we, do we go by year? Um, um, all the nine put together. Yes, the yeah. EC, the court, and the police. So yeah. let's start with the EC. 1999, what was the trust this, perception? Uh, the trust perception for the EC in 1999 was 63%. Okay, so meaning that six out of ten people then believed in the EC. Yeah, in okay. 1999. And this was after the 96 elections. Elections, yeah. Okay. And in uh, 20, 2002, mm. uh, it dropped to 49%. Mm. Uh, in 2005... It went up to 75%. Mm. In 2008, 67%. In 2012, it was 59%. 2014, 37%. Mm. 2017, 54%. 2019, 52%. And 2022 is 33%. So when you look at the data, before the current one, they have the 2022. Mm -hmm. The worst was 2014. Yeah, which was 37 percent. Yeah, and the highest we've seen, even before the 2022, I don't even had the 2020. I was under was 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 the reflective of the 2004 elections. Four elections yeah, that was 75 percent. Yeah, so that's the highest yeah. in the last 25 years. The highest perception the EC has when it comes to how well the citizen is trusting them to deliver on its mandate of being the electoral management body, is in 2005. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I'm wondering why it was lower in 2002 but shot up to 75% in 20, 2005. 
So, to 2002, you know, there was also issues about the elections. Elections, yeah. And it was the first time Ghana was actually handing over power after almost yeah. 90 years. Yeah. So, the NDC was also strong and the election went into a runoff. So, I believe all those issues, the perception that MPP had yeah. about them and all that. Yeah, that, that mm. people were saying, uh, you know, Rawlings was not going. To he was hand over the and all soja that. and all those yeah. things. So, you can see that. I think you brought it, we brought uh, a very interesting trend. The 2012 one, I don't know when they did it, but you can know that the 20. 12 election petition went as far as the 29th of August 2013 when the verdict came yeah. out. So you can see that when they did the 2014 one, the perception reflected in the results. In the results, yeah, yeah. Because at court, we saw the lot of issues. It was almost at 60, 60 percent in 2012, yes. but 2014 is it's just dipped. Yeah. You see, so it, cl it clearly tells you that how well an election goes feeds into a certain perception. So, for example, when you look at the 2017 one, it picked up from 37% to 54%. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. generally, the 2016 election was a beating for the Pretty NDC. Busy, yeah. yeah. Let, let's go to the court. On the courts, in 1999, mm -hmm. uh, the trusts, uh, overall trust of the institution, the courts uh, recorded 58%. Mm -hmm. In 2022, it was 45%. Mm -hmm. In 2025, then it went up to 62%. Mm -hmm. In 2008... Uh, 58%. 58%. In 2012, it was 56%. 2014, dropped to for, uh, 42%. Uh, 2017, 57%. 2019, 47%. And 2022, 36%. Again, the highest in 25 years was 2005. Uh, yeah, 2005. Yeah. yeah that was very 62. interesting. Yeah, mm. the same year as a... Uh, the, the same year the EC also recorded the highest. Mm, so, it, so also when it comes to the court, the court has never uh, uh, gone beyond the 70th mark. No, no. So that's that, also interesting. So they've been hovering around 3 to 6. That is 36 to 62. So meaning 3 to 6 people trusting them. They've never yeah. gone beyond 6 people. And I think the same trend has also been uh, repeated here with the courts. Uh, when power was transitioned from Rawlings to mm. uh, 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 Kufo, the trust was low. The, the trust was low, mm. and then it came up again when Kufo was in power mm. up to 2008. And when you look at uh, the, when the court processes mm. came in, it also did. 2004, how old were you est estimated? 2004, mm. I was in uh, high school still. Oh, okay. I think yeah, I, just, I think because I had just finished high school. It's a bit interesting. Uh, we've not done the police yet, but what I'm glaring is that. The police will also have a higher threshold under Kufo. And it's very interesting yeah. that we are recording these things under Kufo. I think that it's because of maybe he coming after Rollins mm -hmm. and how it was perceived that you know, Rollins. Yeah, was you know, at that time there was a, 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 f a breath of fresh air. Mm. You know, growing up in, uh, you know, in, in the mid 80s, early 90s, uh, the Rawlings coup d'etat mm. image was still Killing very rife and, and, and all that. those things. Oh, Up to when... Leo, don't you also think that what they did, the reconciliation committee... That, yeah, yeah. All of, all of those things, mm. you know, led up to that point where people thought, mm. now, you know, uh, you, can, you can be truly free mm. and, and speak your mind and all mm. of that. So I think those are some the of the reasons. The criminal libel, libel law, law and all, all those that. things. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I think that that's why the numbers okay. might have showed up. So Now let's do the police. Yeah, so the police in 1999 was uh, 49%. I don't think they themselves will be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> mm. In 2002, it was 51%. Mm. In 2005, it was 64. It went up to 64. Mm. In 2008, uh, it came down to 47 so it looks like the only the police uh you know dropped really low in 2008 okay so uh, i think you are right when you check the ec 2005 to 10 they dropped from 75 to 67 mm -hmm. so that's a difference of about eight negative eight yeah. when you look at the court 62 to 58 that's also negative four, four yeah. when you look at the police 64 to uh, 47, 47 that's also about uh, seven so i think that no i no, think 64 to 47 64 to 48 yeah so that's about uh, 17. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. And then. So, that, so they, they, I think that they've never been the same again after the 47 yeah, mark. Yeah, from that point coming, uh, it just uh, it went haywire. You, so, you want to finish the police, I'll tell you another trend I'm seeing. Yeah, so 2012, mm. it was 42%. Mm. In 2014, it came down to 35%. 2017, 40%. 
2019, 37%, and they recorded the worst number yet in 2002 and in 22, which is 28%. That's that's bad. Yeah, I mean, that's the, so just the, about three people has gone down the a, a downward spiral, you know. From and when you actually check in 2022, almost all the institutions, three only three people out of ten Ghanaians trust them. Yeah. Now, what I said about the police is this. When they dropped, when it comes to Facebook, uh, Love FM, LUV99.5 Extra is there. And you can send us your comments. We are discussing the trust threshold Ghanaians have in state institutions. The EC, the courts, and the police because of the critical role they play when it comes to elections. And you can send us a WhatsApp on 0540-448-747. 0540-448-747. Uh, the phone lines will be activated shortly and you can contribute on 03 Now, you look at something. When you look at 08, 2008, when the police dropped from 64% to 47%, they've never gone back to yeah. even uh, uh, 50. Yeah, it has been down, 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 up, down to 28. No, so they actually improved Too in 2017. Small. Yeah, which was from 35% in 2014, they improved to 40. They dropped I mean, again. Five percent. But it's good though. But if you drop at a point, they I dropped. Mean, if you if you look mm. at the in the, the perception index from 64 percent in mm. 2005 to te- to 28 yeah, percent, and then it just slashed to 47. And from there, you haven't even reached 50. If you do five percent difference, I don't think it's relevant. I mean, to, to, but for the to, police, I'm not surprised. You know why? Mm-hmm. And and it's not and, and it's not diff- the reason why we didn't add the military because the military are not in charge of elections. They've made that clear. Yeah. Ghana police is in charge of elections. The military only su- uh, 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 supplement their effort. Now, Leo, when the last time I don't have the data, but the last time the military was also checked when it comes to stresses, they were also reducing. Mm-hmm. So it clearly tells you that how well secure the people feel about the police or the trust in them is waning, mm-hmm. is declining. And for me, extrajudicial killings is one. Mm-hmm. You remember the bank robberies, how they yeah. said police officers were involved. We never heard of the end yeah. of the case. That is one. The Chima and South, how the issues have been handled. Mm-hmm. Even police, their uniforms. You see police officers, some of them drinking. I think that all these things feed into that. So mm-hmm. it may not necessarily and be the because of the relationship with the police with everyday people. Exactly. Which is a big factor. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that... The IGP is trying, but it clearly tells you that people are not really changing their perception. Mm-hmm. Because yes, all the other state institutions are underperforming. The three we are analyzing when it comes to trust. But Leo, when you look at the, the, the one for the police, it's huge. Yeah. And in fact, another thing we should have better, go, look at the EC. In 2019, the trust threshold was 52%. Mm-hmm. Just in three years, they mm-hmm. reduced to 33%. 33%. Yeah. So that's also a drop of about 19. We are talking about the 17 for the police between 2008 and 2012. No, between 2005 and 2008. Yeah. But the EC reduced by 19 percentage points from 2019 of 52 trust to 2022 of 33. That's also huge. And we are not talking about why is it that the EC is reducing in trust like that. That is huge. Now, Leo, let's talk about... The the second one and Joe give me Joe give me the picture too when it comes to I, I've just highlighted it for you the picture too the graph no go back to I've, I've highlighted it for you the easy one where they did the graph now when you are interested in graphs uh, Joe will present it shortly you notice that it is oscillating uh, yeah we can use this I think it's the same as yeah. this we can use this now look at it yeah so you can see that we we, we uh, there's a starting point of 63 mm-hmm. we come to 49, 49 we've shot up 75. to 75 yeah yes then we come to 67 then we go to 59 we we d- see see that see the yeah. decline yeah you can see that the the, the 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 curve is just going down 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 up to 2022 it's terrible yeah look at look at the curve when you look at the graph from 75 to 33 so say you see half of 75 will be what because half of 70 is 35, right? Yeah. So the three will be 37 point something. So meaning that in 20 years, we've declined more than 50%. Mm-hmm. Because 50% of 75 is around 37.5. We are recording 33. So in 20 years, trust in the electoral commission has declined more than 50%. But do you think it's the um, actions of the electoral commission or the political parties that is fueling them the i think that is both how the political parties when they're in position 
characterizes the electoral commission and when you look at the ec and recently i heard charlotte say let me find that audio for you i may even play it now i found charlotte say when he when he spoke to joy you know like this boy intervening mm. personality profile saying that some of the things he was accused of were petty and let's not forget that in charlotte say cases it was the same commission who were accusing themselves of what procurement infractions so i think that over time over time the the actions of the EC itself, and as it portrayed in court, particularly in 2012, where they couldn't account for some of the numbers. numbers yeah. And let's not forget, when you read the, the ruling... The sheet issue. Yes, when you read the ruling of the 2012 election, it was a bit closer compared to the 2020. Yeah. The 2020 was more of a, the NDC not being able to adduce numbers, as Elvis confirmed the but just that they couldn't want to... Uh, they didn't want to show the numbers for some reasons and all that. So I think that it's twofold. Is the EC themselves... And also how the political parties when in opposition classify them. them yeah. Because you see, it's dangerous. And as Kodjo said this morning, why is it that the MPP has agreed with everything the EC have done mm -hmm. when they are in power? Mm -hmm. But when they were in position, they disagreed mm -hmm. with everything. Mm -hmm. So the question is that what do they do with the EC? That when they are in power, they are they very confident yeah, they in become, them. They, they become their spokespersons. Yes, but when <laughs> they go in opposition, so I think that your question is very legitimate. Yeah. There's something there. Because in 20 years, you cannot come down from 75% to 33%. That's shameful. Now, another thing I want Joel to show us. Let's go to the next chat before we open the phone lines. When you go to the next one, where it talks about fairness. No, let's do the fairness first before you come to the fairness intimidation. And, uh, fairness and, and fairness. Freeness, yes. So, freeness and fairness, yes. So, take us through it, Leo. And mm -hmm. the question they asked was, mm -hmm. on the whole, how would you rate the fairness, the freeness and fairness of the last national election? Okay, so, so those who believe it was completely free mm. and fair, mm. and uh, are the ones in green. But then they had minor problems. Are mm. the ones in green, a green line. Mm. And in 1999, that number was 62 percent. Okay, so, so it means that this was after this was based on the 96 elections. Yeah. Because the question is on the whole, how would you rate? The fair, the freeness and fairness of the last national election yeah. in 1999. The last national election was 96. 96 yeah. So only 62 percent said the election was what was free and fair. That's good, but enough. had minor problems. That's good for me, in my yeah. view. Yeah. And then in two, 2005, it was 70, uh, uh, 77 Seven percent. percent. In 2008, it was 83 percent. 2012, it was 80 percent, mm. and then it dipped. Mm. in 2014 which was 46 percent mm. and then it went up again in 2017 mm. uh, which was 87 percent 2019 mm. was 81 percent mm. and uh, uh 2022 was 64 percent you know there's uh, a lot of takeaways from, yeah. from the chat one it means that people believe the 2016 election was the best ever election we've had mm -hmm. And that was under Charlotte say. Yeah. And remember how the woman was attacking this yeah. country. Yeah. It also confirms what Afrejan says that we, the EC, can't do anything. anything yeah. We're not the police station. Because yeah. 87% says that they trusted the Electoral Commission. It's based on the national election, mm -hmm. the last night, which was 2016. So on this call, you can say that Ghana's best ever electoral commissioner we've had. We can even make that inference. Yeah, what Charlotte say? say? Based on these numbers. Based on these yeah. numbers. Do you, look, look, you, looking at mm, the people who who thought it was not free and fair, the numbers only 8%, are really, only eight percent, which is also the lowest. Yeah, the lowest. Yeah. In since 1999. Yeah. It also tells you that people can also infer that because the MPP won with a greater margin. People deem or because people felt that the wind of change was strong in 2016 and the change did happen, then the Electoral Commission did a job. Mm -hmm. Because, again, you know why I'm making that point. Look at 2008. Mm -hmm. It was very strong. The wind of change mm -hmm. then was strong. Mm -hmm. It was 83%. And that yeah. was the best we recorded until the 2016 election. Yeah. So it tells you that any time there's a change in power, power yeah. people deem the election to be fair. Fair, yeah. Yeah, there's another influence, especially, especially when uh, you know all these ideas are thrown about that on Miriam, on Miriam, but Umbirium. it ends up that there's a change, there's a change, and people think, say, Oh, it's a yes, you know, yeah. But look at 2012, <laughs> it tells you that the 2012 electoral petition did a lot of harm to the perception. Mm -hmm. So, it comes back to affirm the question you asked the actions of the political party, party because yeah. Akufuado, Obiche Bilamte, and Baumia took the issue to court, and we saw the, some of the lapses in the electoral management system. People believe in the fairness of the 2012 election 
Yeah. Declined. Decline. And you can even argue that that's fed into Mohammed's loss four years on. Yeah. So when you look at 2014, the number was halved by the two. Yes, and, and, yeah. and see, the people who believed the election had mm -hmm. was not free, was not fair, and had major problems was 45%. Yeah. And those who believe it was free and fair was 46%. Yeah. Almost the same. Yeah, almost the same. So, a more pie. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what even fed into the 2016 election, beyond yeah. the scandals and the corruption and the general maladministration under Mahama in 2016. You see? So it tells you that how well the the last election went will reflects also reflect, in how yeah. well the, the coming election will go. Mm -hmm. you, you, you get it? Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting nuance. Very, very interesting. Now, let's do the last one, the intimidation. Let me open the phone lines. Let's do the, the intimidation. Uh, fear of intimidation or violence mm. in the most recent national election. Mm. And there was, uh, the question What's was... What's the question that uh, they asked? It says, uh, during the last national election campaign in whatever year mm. how much did you personally fear becoming a victim of political intimidation or violence and this is important because when you read the supposed race done by the presidency they are saying that they see voter turnouts going higher in 2024 mm -hmm. and i've always told that anytime there's a high voter turnout there's a high propensity the incumbent wins, wins yeah. anytime there's low voter turnout the opposition wins yeah. for and a, a clear case study is the anc and south africa when you look at the voter turnout in the just ended south african election so how are people deemed to be free when going to vote it's very important and what is the data telling us leo so uh so there has blue two lines one blue one red so the blue lines are those who feared intimidation or violence uh a little, a little or not, or at, not all. at all mm. as in 2008 this one starts from 2008 mm. in 2008 it was 73 percent okay that's good i yeah. mean just that so mean that just about 20 uh two out of or three out of ten people, people feel feared they, the, yeah that's yeah, good yeah and um and I, I understand that because that was when the first time we were actually trying a new government, which was an NDC. The MPP, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. The so so yeah. this 2008 election, and the 2008 election, that's why people are describing the 2004 as the 2008, because it's a bit acrimonious. Yeah. The strong room, the threats, and, and all, all those, of, all those yeah. things. Mm. And then in 2012, we, the record was uh, 80%. Mm. If they feared intimidation that's little or not at all mm. in 2014 so, 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 mm. it was 79 percent mm. so it's reduced yeah so from 2008 to 2012 by one percent okay and then in 2017 it came down by four four, four points that's 76 percent mm. and then in 2022 mm. it's 83 mm. percent so meaning that the election people have voted in and didn't fear mm -hmm. or did they or had little to no fear in, uh, in all the major elections we've had, but after Remta started picking the data from 2008, yeah. was the 2020 election. Yeah. Less but, than 16% had fear. Yeah. The ones that they feared the most was 2008 election, 25% fearing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How, how, how do you understand this? Um, it's interesting to see all the numbers, other numbers, and then see this one going up, 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 mm. up. So, so they tell you that though people don't trust the police, generally... When they come today going to vote, they don't fear. Yeah. So if you're a political party, it means that if you whip up your base well because of this, they can, you can have out. voter turnout in areas where they give you a lot of so, votes. So that also means people are more concerned with the processes, but mm -hmm. not necessarily security. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So they are they are concerned about the process, not the not the event. Not the event. Because voting is a process. Yeah. The event is when yeah. you cast your vote. Yeah. Okay. So once you are done and you go home and the processes are fair, mm. your county and who's who are winning. Mm. I think that that one informs people's decision more than going out to vote because mm. if uh, we are recording low, uh, you know, trust for police and all that, but voter turnout. For me, the police, as I say, I don't think it's necessarily because of election. Yeah, it's it's just everyday. It's, it's, yeah. I think that it's their everyday behavior, how they and, arrest people. Yeah. You know, the news about them, corruption, yeah. tax, and all that. I think that those that, that's what's affecting yeah. them. The easy one is, is the critical one for me. That's why the drop in 19% drop from 52. Joe, you know, if you can bring the easy back, the, the full picture, from about 50 something to 33% is most worried because for them, their business is elections. For 52 to 33, so I was right, 52 to 33, 19% drop for me is important. For the court, too, you can talk about the NAS scandal. 
the yeah. good, the yeah. number two. Uh, no, the, the, the court is not the number, the number so, two. The so for, do, for those who mm. fear intimidation or violence, mm. it looks like the number was up in 2017. Mm. So in 2008, it was 25. Mm. 2012, it was 19. Mm. For 2014, it was 19 again. Mm. And then in 2017, That's the intimidation. The intimidation it so went up the election to that people have, 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 have feared the most. was 2008 elections. Yes. And the second was the 2016. It, yeah. The was, 2016, I think it was because the young people in Charlotte was there, was still the elections. The, yeah. Just like the NDC saying, yeah. the men's hand was still elected. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so okay. it, it comes back to the point that what the political parties say, say really yes, act, holds uh, sway yeah, on, on how people on how perceive, people perceive the issue. Yeah. Because now when you pick when you pick 10 NDC callers, nine will not trust them. Yeah. And it's also backed by the data. So yeah. you can also not entirely jettison their feelings or how they perceive the EC. The phone lines are active now. 0322083596. 0322083598. 0322083597. 